Welcome back to Raven Willow Farmstead. When designing this chicken coop, we wanted to make it 100% predator proof and automate as many features as possible, such as water, feed, and shelter, saving us time during chores and keeping our chickens happy, healthy, and safe. Our first priority is definitely predator proofing. We have seen so many forums and chat groups that share the devastating reality of predators getting into the chicken coop and decimating their entire flock, or morbidly leaving one survivor traumatized for life. We didn't want that experience, so we designed a chicken coop that would be the Alcatraz of chicken coops. What do you guys think? All right, I think they're on board. Now it's really going off to the right. I was bending it trying to make it go off to the left. It looks pretty good from here. I don't know. Does that not look? A little bit maybe, but. Like, it goes <laughs> off to that side. Hmm. We'll put your foot on this side and then pound it in. Any fence is only as good as the posts you use. We decided to go with T posts. For starters, they were cheaper than going with wood posts with the price of lumber, and they were also a lot easier to get into the ground. They'll also last a lot longer than wood. Initially, I had some issues getting the fence posts to go in straight, but it was actually just where I was trying to put it. We decided to go with a hardware cloth over a chicken wire. Chicken wire is probably the most common used wire when it comes to chicken coops, but it's only meant to keep chickens in. Predators can easily rip through the chicken wire and get to your chickens on the inside. Whereas hardware cloth is designed to be much more durable and better protection against predators. See, this is where it gets me. There. <laughs> that worked so good. Yeah. Oh, it still burns. That's from the welded wire. I was wearing a Kevlar glove on the other hand, and then the roll fell and scraped me right up. Oh, Ooh, saving that wire for later. Yeah. That's a good idea. Corner's gonna have to this way. Kind of this way. Some tension. The things don't always, um, the way they work out in your head when you go to do it, it doesn't always work out. You watch videos, and it doesn't always go as perfectly as how they do it. So, looks pretty good though. We're doing the best we can. There's still another two feet to go on top with the second rule. Yeah. But, uh, you can always keep, you know, adding more zip ties yeah. for tension. Yeah. And we're gonna add a layer at the bottom here, overlap so that we can put rocks and Log. Logs and stuff on it. It's stuck in between a log and a root. Right, can you push this back to me? Right here. Right there? That works. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's actually um too high. Let's get through on this side, like right here. As soon as I can one. see through this bush, I can <laughs> do that. Oh no! I didn't go through the hole. Can I undo it? Nope. <laughs> Damn. Okay, run. <laughs> okay, put it through again. <laughs> Almost did it again. <sighs> Come on, there you go. See that mosquito? It's trying to eat me. It didn't sink into my little trench the way I thought it would. It's okay. It's just uneven. The ground is not very even. Perfect. I can get you a shovel. It's the tool I have that will do the job. First, thread it around. Get through this hole. Then use the pliers. Mm 
the gate this morning and then I'm gonna go around the bottom and add extra wire just so that nothing can dig underneath. Building a chicken coop can easily become overwhelming. There's so many decisions to make that you can often get analysis paralysis, get frustrated when the plans you made don't work out the way that they were supposed to. We originally planned on having a deeper buried fence line, but the terrain and thick roots made it impossible to dig a straight line. So we adapted our plan to bring an excess 16 inches of fence weighed down by logs and buried with the soil to prevent predators from digging underneath. So I got the log in place over top of the wire, stapled it on the other side to the log. And now I'm packing it in. Tough job without a trencher. They're probably going to just stay on the lower level. Let's They're still it. pretty young. Give them a chance. Fruit they fish. know. Look at them come. Hi, guys. I'm coming in, too. Hey, chicks. Yeah, almost one more side done. Once we're done this side, then we're halfway there. You already got this one nailed? Yep. There you go. Spider out of here. Get out of here, man. Uh -huh. They only seem to come in two feet that I could find. My goal was to get at least five feet of hardware cloth for the fence and I would cap it off with an electric wire. So if there was any would-be predators trying to scale the fence, they would have a shocking surprise. Yeah, it's almost that time, guys. That sounds like a horse. Always have to be right in the action. 
good. You're fine. Are you a shoulder chicken? There we go. So just temporarily we have kind of like an adjustable latch to keep the door closed until we get our door on Friday. I see one of them jump up the Hi chicks. Come here. Talk joy. There you go. Like I said, I'd rather have cereal over bok choy. <laughs> it's basically cereal. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> you gonna go up the ramp, you guys? Figure that out. You might have to just like put them in there so that they know that that's their house. Yeah, people will start to let yeah. them climatize to that. And then open the door and be like, welcome yeah. to Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> in my hand. Lots of food in my hand. Yeah, just walk right over it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I got the roost. <laughs> I got the touch. I got the tower. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, chicks. How was your first night? Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Don't touch me. <laughs> the black one. He's yeah. He doesn't. Like... Bumblebee. It's raven. Right it's raven. Yeah, it's bumblebee. Yeah. Hi. That one almost looks like a pigeon. Hey, chick, chick, chicks. Who's going to be the first to use a ramp? Come on. Bumblebee's usually the adventurous one. We built this. With some help. Mm -hmm. some very good help, yeah. Still want to put like a little window in there too. Oh, it's the white one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just poops on your ramp? What, how do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it shows us how she really feels, yeah. After the first two weeks of trial and no issues, we felt confident that it was time to bring out batch two. The second thought it was there'd be a space like that. That could work, yeah. Well, let's it, try it with that. Depends on, on what you believe. I mean, yesterday. if it's not working on here, so I've got a 50 amp solar panel up there comes down into this inverter, which then sends power to the uh, battery to charge it. Was this going to be electric power? This? No. No. No.
already bought all the eavesdrop stuff and now it's just a matter of hooking it all up into the top of there, installing the nipples and uh, especially with all the rain that we're getting lately, should keep the, the birds watered all the time. Won't have to worry about filling that anymore. So the more systems we can get on automated, the better. This is the Oh look you got a whole flock over here behind you. Um, I like this little log you put down here. Yeah. Well it gives them something to uh sit on off of the ground. Uh -huh. The ground is kinda wet after the rain we've got, so they like that little spruce tree. They do. It gives them lots of cover from anything, any kind of predators or anything. So, I guess one thing, you could put netting all over everything so that they're protected over the top. Or you can give them multiple different trees in here that can give them that protection. As well as the coop. They can get under the coop. Yeah. Alright, I'll twist this off. Okay. Okay, you all set? Yep. yep. Are you doing any more electric wire over here, Rob? On the fence here? No. So the idea is I'm going to just use some branches that are around in the forest and line them from the bottom up and then cut them at a bit of a tier here so that it matches the uh, electric wire so that nothing can climb through here uh, without going over that electric wire. Here, I'm gonna do some more mesh up here followed by another electric wire, preferably not right by the locking mechanism. because so I wanna change this out for one of those gate pieces. When it closes, it locks and closes, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've gotta flip the tab to open it. The only thing that'll be susceptible is if they decide to climb straight up the side of the coop, which I don't, think they will but I guess we'll see there are raptors in these bushes sneaky little girls all right Uh oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. All right. Upgrade complete. This run chicken door is simply the best. It is light censored. It will open at sunrise and close at sunset. The chickens need water. They always need water. It's a constant chore that has to be done every day. I'm not complaining about that, but if we ever have hopes and dreams of being able to leave the property for more than a day or two, uh, we need to set up an automatic waterer. And what better way than to harness the power of nature to do that? So what I got here it is a 50 gallon drum. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put nipples on the bottom so that the chickens can drink the water coming out of it. Now, how does the water get in there? Well, as I said earlier, harnessing the power of nature. I've got a slight um, slope on the roof. I've got an eaves trough that I'm going to install. 
and that eaves trough into the top of here and out the bottom. That is the plan. So with those nipples on the bottom that they can drink from, these chickens will have practically an endless supply of water. But I don't exactly know how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna start doing it and we'll wing it and see how it goes. Good Caitlin back there harvesting her lettuce. She's really done an amazing job on the garden this year. For first year, I'm just blown away at how much is growing. Uh, usually in your first year, you either, the soil isn't, isn't uh, mature enough to be able to support uh, a good harvest or you get absolutely assaulted by uh, invasive bugs and stuff. They just decimate your crop. But we have been very blessed. Um, we're producing more than we can eat right now. Uh, we're selling a little bit at the uh, neighbor's farm stand and we've been able to give away some, uh, some lettuce and greens and stuff too. So while I was getting this stuff for the water, I realized that I had these. These cool little things allow me to turn the garbage can that I'm using as a uh, food storage into an actual feeder. You put them in upside down like so. This part is, uh, sorry. This part goes inside the can, whereas this side actually acts as a shield so that moisture and, and when it rains, doesn't get inside the can. Now, when I fill that can with chicken feed, they'll be good for like a month. All I have to do is check on it, when it's low, come and fill it with another bag. So I'm actually gonna switch gears and do this guy first, because it's simple, it's easy, and I'll feel better about myself by getting something done. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Step one complete. sworn this was tight. So this goes through like so. And then this goes on. Simple enough, but still too complicated for me at times, it seems. Hey, look at that. So now that I've got it fairly close to the bottom, they'll still be able to reach the dregs at the bottom if it ever gets that low. I don't plan on ever letting it get that low. But they can also get in there and eat away. I think I'll put this one a little bit higher. Okay, we'll go about there. Come on, you. are just long enough. All right, there we go. All right, so we've got all three of those back on. Put the feed back in. So it's got weight, it'll be stable, it won't move anywhere. And hopefully we can see them use it. I'm not gonna need that jar in there anymore. What is this? What in tarnation? Oh, I see the food on the ground around it. Oh, look at that. They've already figured it out. That didn't take long. <laughs> those barred rock, I tell you, they are bright. And those are the ones that figured it out like immediately. Okay, well, they've got that sorted. They don't typically go all eat at the same time. So that's why I'm confident only having three and uh, they'll get what they need and then they'll move on. That is really cool.
Hey, babe. It works. You know, everything that you can do to make the job just a little bit easier, that's worth it in my books, you know? I mean, these nipples and, and, and cones, they were cheap. They weren't very expensive at all. And they're just going bonkers on it. They've got it all, they've all got it figured out. I may not be the permanent position for it because we're gonna be having material coming in through that door on the back. I've ordered the lock. Easy, but game changer. My goodness. They figured this out immediately. It took them no time at all. And now all I gotta do is fill that entire garbage can with uh, chicken food. And that'll keep them fed for probably well over a month, I'm thinking. Just beautiful. It's uh, sealed, it's protected against the weather. And these guys have all got it figured out and they are happy. That's awesome. That makes me feel good. And so over here, I've got way too big of a uh, bracket for a small ground pole. So I need to get a different bracket for it. But you got an insulated wire, got a zap strap to the fence, comes up here in the machine. And install the handy little switch here. Fence is on, fence is off, except this piece. Don't touch that piece. <laughs> and then under here, I have an inverter that's connected to the 50 amp or 50 watt uh, solar panel up top. Comes down and charges the battery. And the power from the battery then goes out to the auxiliary, which goes out to the inverter. Because, silly me, I didn't realize that this thing was a plug-in charger only. So now it has something to plug into. So there's two lines on the fence. Yep. I got a double line. I had to get two different kind of uh, T-posts uh, clips to do that. One for the bottom and then the other one for the top. It goes through the hole. This one just snaps to the side. It says 360, but it really only works for the sides on these ones. So why the two lines? Well, the biggest predators out here um, are raccoons. So raccoons are really good at climbing. So the whole idea is to have them climb the fence. And then when they climb the fence, they've also got to climb over the electric wire. And they'll get a startling surprise that that wire is not too friendly. It's only about 4,000 uh, volts going through this one. It's a smaller charger than for our cows, mm. but it's plenty enough to deter any predators from uh, trying to climb over. I still want to put something along the top along the wire so that it holds it more erect because the poles, the ground is uneven. So when you're trying to put something flat on the uneven ground, you get sagging sections, even though the fence itself is tight, but we'll get it fixed. So because I couldn't get a eight foot or uh, wire so that I had enough to thread along on the bottom or overlap on, under the logs on the bottom. I'm just running a straight line in between the two fences so that they're kind of woven together. Yeah, like that's pretty good. I don't think anything would get through there. No, not without chewing through it. And that will, uh, that will keep that all nice and tight. All right. We're back at it with the uh, eaves trough waterer. So I've gone ahead and I've installed the eaves trough up there. Just a couple of clips clipped right in, screw in the first bracket. Is I've got to insert a small hole here so that when the, the line is coming down the spout, it can rest on top of the hole. And I'll have like maybe a small mesh in there to prevent mosquitoes from breeding. Though having mosquitoes breed in there might not be the worst thing is they seem to be the chicken's favorite snack. Mosquitoes are, are crazy down here by the chicken coop. At the same time, the quickest way to remedy yourself is to go in with the chickens and just kind of sit down with them and, and they will come all around you and it's like having your own mosquito bodyguards. It's hilarious.
So the original plan was to put the barrel on the inside. I already did the math, 600 pounds of water in a 50 gallon drum and with the proper joist, it could hold that weight. But then I learned that having water in the coop during the winter increases the humidity and therefore increases the chance of your chickens getting frostbite. So I changed my mind and decided to install it on the outside of the chicken coop. I can't believe how much they've grown. I think they've grown since I saw them the last time. Do the mosquitoes, they just ting ting ting, they just take them right out of the air. You look so cool. <coughs> I'm hoping that this fence okay. is still tall enough to keep them out. Oh, you're too bad. That one's like one of my favorite colors. Freckle? Yeah, freckle. Yeah, she, she lost. That's how bad it is over by the garden, but I wanted to see one. With all the systems complete, we can be confident that chickens are safe and secure and have access to everything they need, from the gravity-fed food bins to the rain-fed watering system. Being able to run through their coop with bushes and trees to hide under, everything gives us a little bit more satisfaction in, in giving these chickens the best life that they can live. Beginning this project, we felt completely unqualified to be able to accomplish the things that we did. And with a little bit of help, we were able to build the confidence that we needed in order to get this big project done. And also to help us develop the mindset that we can do this. And we are doing this. And if we can do it, anyone else could. Well, I didn't believe it. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was so excited. But I believe that our very own cuddle chick is laying her first egg. We hatch these girls and they're due to start laying eggs end of August, beginning of September, somewhere around there. And she's been sitting in here for a while and does not want to move. I'm pretty sure she's about to lay her first egg. Super excited, super proud. Good girl. Part of the design was leaving several mature trees and bush in the coop to give the chickens ample coverage. This one just likes to be underneath me. I also had a pile of dead branches and brush that they could hide hey, under, Crickle. and they often did, hey, to give them a place that they could run to for security. This one likes the camera. The lens. <laughs> this one's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Tasty little snacks. <laughs> Why, hello there. Hello. My own skittle uh, control. Mm -hmm. Feathers in my face. <laughs> <laughs> got a butt. <laughs> Chicken butt in your face. Guess what? Chicken butt. <laughs> Don't poop on me. Oh, she's going to. Yep, yep. No. Oh, I just saw that. Hi, Dad. No. <laughs> it just, it just rolled, rolled off. off. You little pooper. Just pooped on you. Pooped on me. <laughs> You're supposed to eat the mosquitoes. No. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Of 
green and whisper is tall. We dream the fields and forests call. With hands of hope, we broke the ground. In the magic soil, our dreams are found. <laughs>